Uh, just a quick 30 minute skate today. Get the guys back out there and um, you know, I thought it was Sometimes I think that's good just to go out and get a sweat after you play a game. So uh, back to work for a little bit and then we'll get ready for tomorrow. You talked last night about the PK being courageous. Yeah. But I'm curious about your overall thoughts about the, the competition within the team. Like we've been, you know, we see in practices every day the blue versus the white and the push ups yeah. and yeah. how you're trying to kind of really fuel that mindset, it seems like. So I'm curious why that's important to you. Um, well, uh, there was a lot of reasons why. <clears throat> There's a lot of reasons why I came into camp with a certain mindset, and um, part of it was just, you know, myself and evaluating the job I did, the job I want to do, and then part of it I was watching deep into the playoffs, and you see the level that it takes for teams to get to the final four, to the finals, to become Stanley Cup champions, and uh, just kind of reconfirmed everything, and for me and what I. What I would like to see, or what I would want it to be, in training camp or in practice, and um, to me, those are habits that you can, I think, habits that can be instilled in people, in a team, in an identity, and um, it's something that we've harped on. So you're, you're right with what your eyes are seeing. Guys are working hard against each other. And, and that doing that every day, and, and kind of making them buy into that, you know, creating the habit. How do you see them responding to that? Well, I don't, I don't know if you yeah. make somebody buy into it. I, what I love is that they bought into it. They're competing hard. You can see that it's fun out there too. And so while they're, while they're working hard and they're competing hard, and it's been pretty consistent. Like there hasn't, there hasn't been a practice where you've had to stop and reel it in and say, what are we doing today? And so they're, they bought into it, and um, that's. That to me is promising. That's that's when your team can take steps in the right direction with regard to the, that style or that type of play. Third period last night, the first power play, you had the two defensemen on. Is that a game situation? Yeah, kind of yeah, to? that's exactly what it was. So, and we've been practicing the two. There's been times when they've been out there together, or there's times when Gus took a shift and just managing the score and managing the opponent. And, um, just making sure that, first of all, I think it, I still think it would be a really good power play. I don't think you'd give anything up with the defenseman that we were going to have on the ice. But from a defensive standpoint, to have got two guys that um, think that way, I think when a defenseman gets on the flank of a power play, he thinks about it more maybe on a defensive side of things of what might happen as opposed to a forward sometimes. And so for me, just pulling back the mindset, but not necessarily decreasing the quality of the power play. I wanted to ask you about the one through one neutral zone trap. I know you've done it in the past with other teams, sometimes not with others. What about the makeup of this team do you feel like encourages you that they can execute it? Um, on it? I don't know if it's necessarily the makeup. I mean, I've, I've, I've had this neutral zone defense since 2006 when we won. I remember making a change in that lockout here, wondering if something would work, and I tr tried it. And, fumbled around with it and had wrong guys going and wrong decisions and I think just after doing it so long I see the value of it. I would still rather be aggressive with a two man four check and, and get after people in the neutral zone. But to me sometimes there's just long pauses and long sets of changes and, you know, instead of just sending people recklessly down the ice we may as well try to defend them, you know, through the red line. You said you wanted to, you know, that, that was a, you, just, you wanted to focus on that going for you. It wasn't your favorite part of the night, but. Yeah, uh, and we did. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. And we did. Uh, I have no idea where I was going to go with that. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, I had it, now it's gone. Maybe it's okay. it'll come to me. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll step are you, are you, in. Uh, are, you, are you a coach who announces your contenders? Um, in, in the mornings I do. And so sometimes when I get off the day before, um, I haven't even talked to the whole thing yet. You know, we let them know as a day, so probably probably fair to hear it from us first before they, they read about it. Same thing with lineups. Um, you know, there's a chance that everybody knows. Um, I just don't like to let things out too early because things can happen through the course of the night. And you know, you might tell a player that they're out of the game. And somebody gets sick, and now they're back in the game, and wondering why they came out of the game. So it's just 
it just eliminates a lot of problems just to handle things in the morning. So, but it's still back to the same thing. And, you know, I don't. I think everybody played well enough to earn a spot in the starting game, but those are the decisions that happen to be made. Actually, I wanted to follow up on that. Just you know, Igor did win his 100th. Um, it seems like a nice round number. I don't know what it means to you in terms of watching a young goalie like that, and what do you what do you think it signifies? Pretty amazing. You know, so 100, 100 games, 100 wins out of 159 is, um, that's, that's impressive. And you can see it though, in the, you can see the way he practices, the way he prepares himself, um, his professionalism. And then even, like we, you know, we, we showed some clips in there today, there's a save he made. Um, uh, player get to the top of the circle and just let a wicked wrister go. And it was labeled to the it was labeled to the far side, and Brad had the same type of look, and Brad had the same type of look, and Aaron had put it in, and that's a huge save. It's a one nothing game at that point. There's not a lot of action coming at him, so mentally to stay in that game like that, that was a big save for me inside the game, and uh, but that's that's his mental focus and his professionalism and his his ability that he has. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I know you're not trying to divulge everything, but what about it last night, the 131 neutrals on trap? Do you think you want to tighten up? Uh, there's, there's just mostly it's positioning. Mm -hmm. If you if you've played a 1-2-2 two, two for a long time, which I believe they have here, and then you move it to a 1-3-1, one, one, it's, it's very different. And um, there was a ton of holes early on in training camp and odd man rushes and some of that would stem from offensive zone decisions but some of it certainly stemmed from neutral zone play and um, the last two games we, you know there was session after session about just trying to tighten things up and I think the more we talked and as the teams broke down it just became our group and we were able to have more structure more meetings about it I think the guys really started to understand it I don't think we're there yet because there was there's, like I said there was you know if there's it was 33% of the clips in there today. And so there was a lot of good clips and a lot of positive clips, but there was teaching clips too. And so 33% of the clips were on the neutral zone. Just things we did well and things that we could do better. And so I think they're starting to get it and just keep moving them around. But there's just a difference between the two. And so I think they're starting to understand that a little bit. Just wanted to ask about uh, laugh. I think 80% of my face off last night. I'm sure yeah. you'll take that. Yeah. But as part of that, are you protecting Heat a little bit coming back from that injury too? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's just a good spot to do that when somebody's coming back and, you know, everybody's dealing with things. And even to, out here today in practice, you got guys dealing with things. But um, we had talked to Laugh about it. And, you know, I saw his, we looked up his face off percentage and we sat him in on the face off meetings and worked with him on ice a little bit. And, Tried to give him some help, and then he crushed it. There's, they'll have. I mean, you know, he's not a natural sentiment, and so last night it went our way in the circle a little bit. And he was a part of that. He did. A, he did a really good job. So I don't think it's something that we want to marry for the rest of the year. But it was nice that he was able to jump in and, and help fill out in that situation. Is today one of those days where you'll tell us who the goalie is tomorrow? Today. No, no, Larry never. Tried. No, I'll never do that. <laughs> oh, you'll never do that. No, because I haven't told the goalie oh, okay. yet. So oh, okay. You what said I, some, some days. Some mornings. Some, some mornings. Some mornings. So meaning tomorrow, <laughs> if we meet and you guys chat. But I haven't, you know, we're still, we're still communicating right. with the players, so. Understood.